Do not be anxious. This is God's direct command to you as a Christian. This is not a suggestion. This is not, oh, don't worry about it. This is a command. You are not to be anxious. Now, the gospel reading for today from Matthew chapter 6 includes one of those phrases that ends up on throw pillows around the world in all kinds of grandmother's houses. Consider the lilies. Now, Jesus uses these examples of the lilies that don't spin and the birds that do not gather and reap their harvest to say that God takes care of them, provides for them, and he'll provide for you. The point of God's command, Jesus' command, not to be anxious is this. God will provide. Your anxiety won't. Let's get into it. One of the ways to misunderstand this passage is to say, well, God is saying don't be anxious, but he's only really talking about those, those trivial, trivial matters. You know, uh, what, don't be anxious about what you will wear, for example. Consider the lilies. Because you've got a whole wardrobe full of clothes, so don't have anxiety about those things because your fashion doesn't matter as much as you think it does. But this isn't what God's saying. He's not just saying, well, you know, don't be anxious unless it's something super duper serious. Then, by all means, be as anxious as you can. God is saying, don't be anxious, even in those situations. Now, when we look at this, when, when, when we look at this passage in Matthew chapter 6, God says, he, he talks about the birds. The birds don't, the birds don't toil, and he talks about the flowers, and, and they're clothed with more splendor and glory than, than Solomon in all of his majesty. Uh, this, is not, this is not, don't be anxious about your fashion sense. This is, if you have no clothes at all, do not be anxious. This is talking about somebody who is so poor, so in need, that they do not have any clothes or they do not have the appropriate clothes. And do you know what happens to somebody who, who lives a life without any clothes in a dangerous spot? Some place is too hot, some place is too cold, some place with too much sun. They die of exposure. Jesus is not talking about a fashion sense here. He's talking about life and death. Same thing with the birds toiling. Do you know what happens when someone doesn't eat? When birds don't eat, they die. But consider that both these birds and these lilies of the field are taken care of in abundance. God takes care of them, and he loves you more than them, and he'll take care of you as well. He's talking about life and death. He's talking about those serious moments in your life when you are most tempted to have anxiety. These are those moments when you should look to the cross, when you should look to Christ, when you should look to the kingdom of God. In there, you should find your comfort because you know that Jesus died on the cross for your sins. You know how the story ends. You know that you will be resurrected and then on the last day, your body will be raised and you will be in heaven and then the new earth and you'll be with Christ in his kingdom forever and ever. Amen. You have no reason to be anxious because those things will be taken care of. And along the way, there will be challenges. There will be trials that you'll endure and God will take care of those too. Maybe not in the way that you want. Maybe you want healing for your wife or your mother or your, or your daughter, and they're in the hospital. And God's way of providing healing is to take them home to be with him. The lilies of the field, God is not saying the lilies of the field never wilt. God is not saying that the birds of the air, excuse me, the birds of the air never, never starve. What God is saying is that he takes care of them and he'll take care of you even more. And it'll take care of you in such a way that you have no reason to be anxious about anything, whether it's trivial or whether it's this massive, it's something of life and death. Now, the Old Testament reading for today is from 1 Kings chapter 17. This is Elijah and the widow of Zarephath and her son. This is another example where we can look back and say, well, look, God took care of these people. They had no reason to be anxious. Well, yes, but when they were living in the moment, I'm sure they were tempted to anxiety. So Elijah visits this widow in Zarephath and she's collecting a couple of sticks and she's going to burn them and, and, and cook a, a small loaf of bread, a small cake of bread uh, for her son and her to, to share. And then they're going to die of starvation. And Elijah, well, God provides through Elijah miraculously. So this woman's food does not run out uh, and he takes care of him. He saves them from death. This is life and death. And God removes the reason for anxiety. Then if you keep reading after verse 16, uh, the story continues. Elijah interacts with the woman of Zarephath again, and but her, her, this time her son has died as an illness. And then Elijah, the power of God through Elijah, brings the son of the widow of Zarephath back, back to life. Again, I imagine it's probably, it's probably anxiety-inducing for a mother who has just survived starvation with her son to now see her son dead. I'm sure that caused all kinds of anxiety that she would have been tempted to indulge it, and yet God provided for her. There was no reason for their, for their anxiety. God provides, your anxiety doesn't. 
And this is Jesus' whole point here, whether it's the widow of Zarephath and her son, whether it's the lilies of the field, whether it's the birds who toil, whether it's you. God provides and your anxiety doesn't. In fact, it is so absurd to think to think that your anxiety is important. It's so absurd to be anxious uh, that, that Jesus says this statement. He says, and who, by being anxious, can add a single hour to their life? What good is your anxiety, even if it spurs you to frantic action? If God does not provide those things that you need, you will not get them. And he will provide those things that you need, or he'll take you home to be with them. You win either way. As a Christian, God provides your anxiety, doesn't. So don't be anxious. It's, it's not just a recommendation. It's not just practical advice. It's a command. Do not be anxious. Do not be so self-obsessed that you think, well, I have to solve this problem and even God can't sa save me. Even God can't solve this problem. No, no eh, stop. Trust in God. He will solve the problem. And with his death on the cross, the forgiveness of your sins and the promise of eternal life and salvation, he has already solved the biggest problem there is. Everything else is peanuts compared to that. Maybe miserable peanuts and maybe a lot of suffering to endure. But at the end of the day, the Christian is saved. You have no reason to be anxious. Live day by day. Tomorrow has enough anxiety for itself. Just Or today has enough anxiety for itself. Don't worry about tomorrow. Worry about, are you a Christian? Are you a baptized believer? Are you saved? Are you forgiven? Yes? Then God is taking care of you, and he will continue to provide for you. It's taken care of. Do not be anxious. God provides. Your anxiety doesn't. God bless you. Take care.